In today's video, I'm going to be going over the best new features I've seen so far for NBA 2K25 and break it down all for you guys in this video. Now, a disclaimer, this video is going to be recorded before they drop any my player or my career info, so that will be covered in a totally separate video. So let's start off with one of the bigger things for NBA 2K25, the court spacing. It has been confirmed by Mike Wang in a post that on NBA 2K25, we adjusted the player to court ratio in NBA 2K25 to give players more room to operate. It's improved the flow of the game and allows for certain cuts that would often get jammed up before. So it sounds like there's going to be more space on the court in NBA 2K25. So for structured offenses like the five out, the pick and roll will gain tremendously from this. On defense, this also leaves less room for pinching, rotating, and playing two because a player model is going to be able to cover less court space on NBA 2K25. So the next big thing we're going to talk about here is the pro play itself. They've said that they've added 9,000 new animations to NBA 2K25. Now the big thing when it comes to these new animations is that they all have to be usable or a lot of them have to be usable we cannot have another year where there's only one animation per category that's miles better than the rest so in nba 2k24 that'd be jamal murray behind the back john wall crossover john wall step back and everything else wasn't really anywhere near that level now as a content creator who makes almost exclusively nba player content this will make my build videos a whole lot more fun and realistic to make being able to change from using Wemby animations on one build to kd animations on the next will make the game feel more refreshing and fun every single time I load up. Now, it is also important to mention that the new mechanic, which they call the signature go-to shots. New pro play animations to the game this year. A lot of them are shots, signature shots. So nearly every player in the league now has a signature shot. One of the cool things that we added was this feature called signature go-to shots. So if you remember in 2K24, you could flick the right stick up and you could um, do a little size up sequence to get open, right? In 2K25, if you hold the right stick up, you can do a size-up sequence that branches directly into your jump shot. So it's a nice way to get open and get some shots off. These are going to be player-specific go-to animations that you can start by holding up on the right stick. Now, apparently they added these for almost every single NBA player in the league, and that will really make things interesting and hopefully add some more variety to the game like we mentioned earlier. But now let's talk about defense a little bit. And with that, we're going to be talking about this new defensive movement system. Now, this new defensive movement system might be a game changer because with the player models taking up less space on the court, like we mentioned earlier, it sounds like one-on-one -on -one defense will have to be better this year in order to get stops on NBA 2K25. From my understanding, this new cutoff animation is very simple. All you have to do is hold L2 or left trigger if you're on Xbox and then flick the right stick in a desired direction you wish to cut off a player. Now, I think this can provide some high risk slash high reward to one-on-one -on -one defense because if you cut them off in the correct direction, it can create some easy defensive stops. Now, if you cut off in the wrong direction, it should create easy offensive opportunities for a player to score. So let's say a player is trying to go left. You think he's going right. You do the cutoff to the right, but he goes goes left, it should give them a wide open bucket. Now moving on to the next new mechanic on NBA 2K25, we have rhythm shooting. Now this has been described as something you do by using the right stick and that if you learn this new mechanic, you will become a better shooter than the people who traditionally use the regular shooting button. If this does end up becoming a new mechanic that provides a further skill gap to shooting, that would be really interesting. Staying on that topic with shooting, apparently there have also been some changes to the contest system on NBA 2K25. When it comes to calculating a shot contest, it will be different on NBA 2K25 because they will factor the beginning of the shot animation more when it comes to determining contests. Which to me sounds like in order to get a good contest on NBA 2K25, you will have to be closer to a player and can't just rely on a late jump contest to stop a shot from going in. Now Mike Wang also mentioned that height and perimeter ratings will matter more this year for calculating the contest of a jump shot. So if all of this ends up being true, it might be more difficult to contest taller players when closing out late on NBA 2K25. So to does this mean stretch bigs will be back? Wait a minute, we'll see, who knows? All right, so now something new that they have done this year is they've actually started a Q&A in the 2K Discord where you can ask questions directly to Mike Wang. And depending on whether or not they want to answer that question, you will get a response. So we're gonna go through this entire Discord and talk about all the questions and the answers that were asked in the later part of this video. So let's get to it. Our Insta green animations back, question mark, answer, yes. There's a new shot feedback option called simple and the customized HUD menu that is on by default, this will display your timing feedback immediately.
immediately once you release your shot. If you want the full shot feedback, which includes defensive coverage, you'll want to change the visibility setting to all shots. Full shot feedback is delayed. It's just like it was in NBA 2K24. Now, one big thing before we continue on with this video, with this, with this Discord section of the video, I do want to really point out that you guys have to understand that like uh, there's a lot of people asking questions and they are realistically only going to answer questions that they really want to answer. I think it was actually one of like Joe Knows' videos or on his like second channel, he was talking about how, oh, people are asking terrible questions or whatnot. There, there are still a lot of people in the gameplay questions asking great questions. It's just, it's still on 2K's end to decide whether they want to answer it. And they're answering some questions that maybe Joe would probably consider not important. But again, that is nothing wrong with him on that end for that. So now the next thing, how are free throws this year? I think, I think this was the one where he freaked out about it. It's just like, why are you asking this? So we'll skip over this one. One. Uh, is the port to player model ratio different? We talked about this. This was a big thing we talked about earlier on. They have changed the player model ratio. How are shot meters changed in 2K25? We got a glimpse of one in the trailer and it looked a bit more transparent than previous 2Ks. The shot meter works pretty differently into NBA 2K25 compared to previous games. There are three options to choose from, arrow, default, ring, and dial. Rather than freezing when you release the shot button, all of the meters animate from beginning to end in sync with the ideal time to release the button. Think of it more as a time timeline of the shot animation rather than a traditional meter. Now, I think this is 2K's best attempt possible to try and combat Titans, because if you guys don't know, Titans are a script that you're supposed to use with the meter on. It's a device that you connect to your PC or whatever, and I don't really know the full extent of how it works, but apparently it works the best when you have your meter on. But since now the meter animation is just a pre-played default animation that plays all the way through, I don't know know if they're going to be able to find a workaround to make titans work with these meters i'm not 100 percent sure i'm not sure if it was their intent to combat the titans with this but i think it could help it's totally possible it can make it more inconsistent now they go on to keep saying the ideal time to release the button is the exact frame the meter disappears from your screen it'll make more sense when you try one of the main benefits of this change is that shot meters are much more accurate online so you no longer need to compensate for latency when you're shooting shots layups or free throws online that we'll just have to wait and see the size color and placement of the shot meter is fully customizable in your customized HUD screen and, and yes there is still a small bonus for playing with the meter off so me I'm gonna be playing with the meter off I'll be playing with the layup meter probably on though because there's just so many different animations I like having the layup meter on but for jump shots my meter will be off because I just prefer it that way I'd never be good at timing a meter um speaking of the next meters let's talk about layup and dunk meter any changes to the layup and dunk timing this year and the answer is layup timing is optional and disabled by default but I'd recommend turning it on if you want to gain an advantage as a slasher just like like shots, there are separate layup timing profile options, real player percentage, low, normal, and high. So you can customize the setting to match your ability. Dunk timing is always on for skill dunks, but you can still skill dunk without using that particular mechanic. The dunk meter logic has also been improved, so instead of the window size being determined at just the start of the dunk, it dynamically adjusts throughout the entire dunk sequence to better reflect defensive impact. So if you guys do not know, on NBA 2K24, your dunk meter size does not change once like you initially see the dunk. So it's either going to be huge or it's going to be tiny. There's usually never really in, any in between. This applies to standing dunks and driving dunks. But now they're saying next year on 2K25, the dunk meter is going to fluctuate a whole lot more. So if somebody closes out late or has or closes out, has good block rating, that'll change the size of the dunk meter, which I think is how it should have been. And this definitely sounds a whole lot better than the current dunk meter, because if you get a dunk meter off and somebody closes out, it's GG's. You're not going to be able to get a stop. Now, <laughs> now this is a question that me and Koza both asked. Are there any changes to the passing mechanics of this game. There are a number of improvements to the passing overall, but the most noticeable is improved lob pass logic. The targeting on lobs is much better in NBA 2K25 and is really great for advanced passes or leading a receiver to the basket over a trailing defender. Control wise, bounce alley oops are now triggered contextually and self alleys have been moved to cross plus circle or A plus B. So that would be like circle plus X on PlayStation. I don't know why they use cross, but it's it, it, most people say X on PlayStation, but I guess for clarity, verification that that's the place they should controls now the main thing here right 
with me asking, I'll speak for myself. I'm not going to speak for Koza on this one. With me asking this question, right? If this wasn't exactly the answer I was looking for. When it comes to lobs, I'm happy that lobs uh, sounds like are going to be better. But I was really looking forward to getting answers when it comes to fast breaks. Am I going to be able to throw a break better on NBA 2K25? Is there going to be more contextual awareness for a player if somebody's jamming the inbound? Is they just going to are they just going to throw it straight into somebody's face? Will my my player understand that there's somebody standing in front of him and he probably shouldn't do a chest pass and he should probably throw like some sort of wraparound pass or an overhead pass? Obviously, you could jump pass by holding A and X, which is a mechanic that people should be doing off the inbound jam. But there stood there should be still some level of the my player being able to understand the situation at hand and make a better pass that doesn't just throw it straight into the defender's face like that's guarding you or standing right in front of you. So I was looking more for an answer along those lines, more for an answer along when it comes to like fast break passes, passing lane steals even. Depending on who you ask, some people will say they're too easy, some people would say they're too hard, but I, I think they're a little too hard on NBA 2K24. Maybe it'll be easier on 2K25. I doubt it considering court, like the, the spacing of the court is different and you could cover less difference distance because because your play models are smaller, but that's a totally different conversation for a different day. But that that's pretty much everything that Mike Wang said about the passing mechanics. But man, <laughs> that's that's not what I was looking for. That was not what I was looking for. I, I, I wish for a 2K that has like a really good passing system. I want to be able to almost put like it's Madden. I want to be able to throw a high pass. I want to be able to throw a low pass. I want to be able to throw a touch pass. Like uh, there's there should be a level of skill to passing more than just like eye contacting the right person at the right time. Let me be able to lead a pass in a specific direction with like the default like mechanic settings. So I th I genuinely think the passing system is one of the worst things in 2k and I, i'm saying that like with the most like open and honest like i'm not trying to attack anybody when i say this but i genuinely think the passing system is one of the worst things in 2k and it's one of the things that's never really brought up because people don't care enough to bring it up i think i think the passing system is genuinely terrible like there should be some way to be able to lead a pass change the direction the timing the angle of the pass but yeah but hey love's got better i guess it's a big thing this was kind of expected can you still jab step into a standing meter dunk you can no longer perform jab steps when standing underneath the basket you'll get pump fakes now instead this is literally just the Kobe jab into the meter dunk. If you guys haven't done that on 2K24, it's a very common thing. So I'm glad they got it fixed. Have scoopers been retuned? Quick scoop layups got a small nerf to better balance the risk versus reward of using these type of finishes. That's that's nice. Solo asked that. That's good. All right, now here's a big thing. On the courtside report, it says you added over 9,000 animations. Could you tell us more? We've added over 9,000 pro play animations to NBA 2K25, bringing the total to around 14,600. From the main gameplay categories, there are 1,500 dribble sequences. There are 1,500 dribble sequences, 1,100 shots, 1,300 motion sequences, 800 rebounds, and 1,000 passes, 434 dunks, 550 blocks, and 1,110 layups that are new to NBA 2K25, and there are plenty more in there and other miscellaneous eras. Areas. God, I can't speak. Again, going back to what we talked about earlier, this is good. You can add all these animations that you want, but a lot of them got to be good in order to justify adding all of these. Like, if we add over 15 hundred dribble sequences and only 10 of them are good yikes that's bad ball but hopefully hopefully they, they they've received some community feedback and they and they know what they're doing in that regard hopefully um are there any new post moves <laughs> now when this question is asked i'm thinking they're talking about like some refined footwork mechanics to maybe up and unders something along those lines post spins post escape moves post escape moves are kind of weird in this game if you guys remember like older 2ks it was so much easier to do escapes out of the post you could flick back on the right stick and just literally just do an escape out of a post up which was so much better than the current mechanics that we have and we got no answer about that because they respond by saying there are some new post fades and hooks thanks to pro play which i don't think is what they were looking for when they asked this question but hey it is what it is. Will you need a post control attribute? Speaking with the post scoring stuff, will you need a post control attribute to score post fade? You don't need post control for post fades. Post control is more for post moves. Post fade success is driven by your shot ratings, close slash mid and badges. Now this was a bad question to ask Mike Wang because this is, I believe the intent of this question was more along the lines of, will you need post control for a specific badge that helps you hit post fades? If you know what I'm saying? Because 
I'm pretty sure everybody knows, or maybe I'm just over-assuming the understanding of the game by the people asking these questions, but I'm pretty sure most people know that all you need is a mid-range rating to shoot a post-fade and like the specific mid-range badges. But if you're like making a my player build, you need a specific badge, which needs specific post control ratings and mid-range ratings to unlock the badge. So uh, let's say it's post-fade phenom again on NBA 2K25. I'm pretty sure you're still going to need post control for specific levels of post fade phenom so although yes in theory all you need is a mid-range rating to shoot a post fade but if you're somebody who's gonna be making builds in the my player builder you're more than likely also going to need post control so you can get post paid phenom on whatever level you want to upgrade it to how will hot zones affect shooting this year hot zones will give you a small boost to your shot ratings I actually talked about hot zones again later on so we'll get to that in a little bit now this was an interesting one what changes have been made to post defense post fades and hooks now use a different set of contest logic than normal shots the new logic better simulates how shooting out of the post is in real life and puts more of the make versus miss on the shooter's ability to time an inherently more difficult shot. Defenders will still want to get a hand up or jump to contest to make it tougher for the shooter though. Now, I tried to ask for clarification on this one on Twitter, in Discord, but to my guesstimation here, and I could be totally wrong, with this, it makes it sound like, now I'll, I'll focus on this part first, I feel like they're saying it's going to be harder to time post fades and post hooks on 2K25 than it is on 2K24, because they're basically saying the new logic better simulates how shooting out of the post is in real life and puts more of the make miss on the shooter's ability to time an inherently more difficult shot. So they're classifying a post fade as a difficult shot which i mean hey that's totally fine by me so they're saying that post fades will probably be harder to time because we're considering them a difficult shot this year the other thing here and this could go either way i'm not 100 percent but i'm leaning in one direction post fades and hooks now use a different set of contest logic than normal shots so again i tried to ask for clarification on how that contest will work but what i'm thinking is that since they're saying the shot's going to be more difficult to time maybe it's also going to be harder to contest because they're using a different contest test system for the fades and the hooks because in my opinion it would be crazy if you did both right where you said all right we're gonna make the shot more difficult and we're gonna make it easier to contest i think that would be kind of wild but I, what i'm thinking is that it's going to be is that it's gonna be a harder shot to time smaller green window than previous years but it's a different contest system and it's actually a little bit harder to contest and the thing thing that makes me think that is that it says that the end defenders still want to get a hand up or jump to contest to make it tougher for the shooter though so i don't know we'll have to wait and see but yeah uh this is about the signature go-to shots are signature go-to shots limited to only step backs what type of shots would we be expecting to see answer is there's quite a bit of variety in the signature go-to shots some attack the basket more than others some escape more side to side some end in step back jumpers while others end in pull-ups or hezzy pull-ups mm, hezzy pull-up mm, katie 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 hezzy pull-up hang pull huh? Huh? huh huh okay sorry i'm a little excited uh darius garland is one of my favorites yeah i'll pass that off to the Cavs fans that absolutely hate darius garland but and remember that there's different content based on which hand you're dribbling with or if you're coming out of a triple threat so make sure you pay attention to that okay interesting so they're saying there's more signature shots based off of what hand the ball's in whether you're coming out of a triple threat or not interesting interesting so like is there a signature shot you can go straight into out the triple that'd be interesting uh so make sure you pay attention to that signature go-to shots also have the benefit of a larger green window and slightly higher make percentages they're also a useful tool for dribblers to have in their bags you can create a lot of interesting combos with shot canceling interesting so they're also making these shots easier to hit so they're really trying to force this mechanic to be something in nba 2k25 okay only time will tell obviously and then the last one here will lethal zones be in nba 2k25 yes the design is also a little bit more fun too. Instead of automatically working on two zones and it lasting one week, there's three versions slash options to choose from. Week one, you have one zone. Two weeks, you have two zones. Three weeks, you have three zones. For the three weeks version, you will face off against lethal interesting interesting okay so that sounds really cool i'm not gonna lie that sounds pretty cool but that's gonna be it for this portion of the video and that's actually gonna be it for this video um whole lot of content again when it comes to the my player the my career stuff that's not part of this video i've recorded that before any of that stuff came out it still hasn't come out yet so uh, we'll just have to wait to see on that but i hope you guys enjoyed